Hey, good morning everybody. It's Friday and it's Facebook Live here in my stamping room. I'm really excited about today's show because it's kind of an everything old is new again show. Um, sometimes some of the best products that you really loved um, that have been retired from older um, Stampin' Up! catalogue ranges get bought back in because they were really good products and maybe we're missing them. So today I'm going to be talking about one of those products that I think that you're going to really love. Now let me just, um, excuse me while I touch my phone there, I just want to flip us around so, oh not upside down, <laughs> that's funny, uh, look that way so everything <laughs> I was upside down there for a minute I don't know whether that actually showed up that I was upside down but um, I could see myself upside down that was funny all right so I am just going to share this live video on my um, on my personal page so while you guys are coming in I can see a few people are coming in make sure you say hi um, good morning to you. Uh, please, if you can share this video and tell everybody I'm on live. Good morning, Amanda. How are you, sweetie? Um, tell everybody I'm on live because uh, it's fun to share and it really brings me a lot of joy to be speaking to people in real life time. That's super cool. So I'm just going to share this now and we'll see what happens so do some sharing people so what have you guys been up to this week I have been very busy I was upside down for it but you should carry it isn't it that was kind of fun I don't know that I should do a complete upside down show but um, let's um let's see how that goes so welcome Kerry you made it this morning it's lovely to see you here live I've got lots of fun things to talk about and share this morning good morning Leone how are you we were just doing some Leone is my sister and she was just sharing some funny videos that I've done in the past for Stampin' Up and um, I'm hoping that this isn't going to be a funny video I'm hoping this is not going to be on my blooper real I've had some oh you know what I'm gonna try out while you guys are just coming in I've I'm trying out a microphone today because sometimes my voice the the volume goes up and down so I'm gonna plug in the microphone and if you guys can tell me if you can't hear me anymore that would be awesome how 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 does the volume sound guys can you still hear me and does it sound okay so while that's happening and I'm waiting for someone to get their little typing fingers oh thumbs up fabulous so um, while you're coming in I wanted to share with you some cards it's good does it sound the same Amanda or is it a little different um, I want to share some cards that we made at class um, earlier in the week. So uh, the first Tuesday of each month I run classes here at my home. Good morning Kayla, how are you? Um, it sounds the same, good news. So um, I run some classes at my home once a month and this month we explored the um, Eastern Palace um, stamp set and framelits and the ladies had a lot of fun and we did three cards we did kind of like a basic card and we did a little bit stepped up and then we went crazy and we just went let's just put all the things on this card and make it um, super uh, super blingy and super busy so here are some of the cards I've, now you know I kind of I probably more like the subtle colors so my poor ladies have to kind of put up with the cards that I like so that was the 
um, one that was just a really subtle card, very simple, just some ribbons and a little bit of stamping. I love that just those little sweet accents can make such a difference on a card, but you could make lots and lots of those cards, a piece of designer series paper. I, I, I'm not sure if we can still get that designer series paper or whether it's sold out. Maybe someone can tell us. Um, this is the second one that we did. Again, using the Eastern Palace framelits, and then I've also used my circle framelits there to cut that one out. A little bit of embossing there. I'm always confused because the, you know, I flipped the camera. So, and of course, can you see the silver heat embossing? You know what? Anytime that we get uh, we get to play with some heat embossing at class, the ladies love it. So, you know, let's we do. I do what they I do what they love to do. Now this is the stepped up one where we just kind of went crazy. Let's just cut heaps and heaps of little bits and pieces out and stick lots of things on. So, this is let me show you. That is the one that we just did lots of fun stuff. So you can see we've got a couple of die cuts from the Eastern Palace range. We've um, heat embossed on vellum there and we've got some sequins and some other die cuts. We just went a bit crazy and that was fun. They had a lot of fun with that. So the Eastern Palace bundles are on sale at the moment. They are such a fabulous set. I think everyone really enjoyed playing with all the different dyes that put together. Um, I know we did a little bit of that last week here on the Facebook Live. Um, thank you, Amanda. Um, so you really need to get in and grab this bundle. There's two different sorts of bundles on offer. You've got like a starter bundle and you've also got the stepped up premier bundle that is on sale and you get some um, some free product in the, those bundles this month as well. So go to my blog carolynbedding.com and have a look at the two different ways that you can get those bundles and all of the different products in those bundles. They don't just come with stamp sets and framelits. There is designer series paper, there is tassels and stickers and all sorts of fun things that are going to make your stamping and car making you know super fun and, and easy to do the other thing that I don't want you to forget about is the retirement list is out so our poor annual catalog is in its final days and if you want any of those sweet stamp sets that are retiring you've got to get them now before they are gone 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 and I'm actually talking about a retired stamp set today that I think is from um, gosh it must be from about 2014 that's when I was um, I made this card that I'm going to show you and I cannot remember the name of the stamp set I even googled last night and I didn't spend ages googling I'm sure I would have found it if I had spent ages googling but this is the card please somebody tell me what stamp set that is can you remember it was actually one of my favorite stamp sets so and I'm thinking it was like nature's elements nature's something or other so if anyone's got their good thinking caps on that can remember that one it was from about five years ago but um, I love this card this was you know I made this card I thought I was super duper clever and I think we even did it as a class and I know that I popped it into a magazine and they published it and I was like hoo, 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 hoo. I got published so um, that was pretty cool too so I thought that um, we would have another go at this card today and um, the reason why I thought we would have another go at this card is because in the new Stampin' Up! catalogue, which I have got, which I can't show you the inside of yet because that breaches Stampin' Up!'s policy until next month when we can have a really good look through. But this is the new Stampin' Up! annual catalogue and it is really, really beautiful. Um, and one of the things that I was so excited to see was that they're bringing back 
glossy white cardstock. And as soon as I saw that, I thought about this card, um, which is which is such a fun card to make. And because it's this, this is glossy white cardstock that I've made this wood uh, background with. And wood is kind of like really on trend at the moment, but um, back then it was kind of just a kind of nifty background technique, but I, I super love um, this technique and I know that you're going to have fun with it. So even though at this very point in time you cannot order the glossy cardstock yet, um, I was pretty excited because I still had some sheets from when we used to sell it and then it got retired from the catalogue. Now when I had a look through the um, the explanation of what's this, the cardstock, the glossy cardstock that's coming, I don't have the new one yet but it said it was shiny white on one side and matte on the other side and this, the old version, is shiny white on one side and, and matte on the other side. So I'm guessing it's going to be similar. It might be a little bit different. Um, they might have improved it a little bit, but um, it's, you know, let's give it a go. Let's use this one and maybe when the new one comes out next month, you'll be able to order that or I'll have a little, another little play with it and we'll be able to see whether it's the same and if it can do this technique. I think it will be able to do this technique. So that's going to be really fun. So when I started playing with um, this card, I was just going to make exactly this card again and you know it's really I really find it very challenging to make the same card twice so I've had to step it up and make a little bit different so that's the old one so have a good little sticky beak so the new one is kind of like um was is is kind of like a an homage to it a play on it so here is the one that we're making today, this is the new, the 2017 version and I think that's kind of fun. I think it's it probably shows, um, good morning Leanne, how are you sweetie? Um, it probably shows the transition of my style over the years more than anything. So that's the old version, oh, can't see me. Um, old version lots of squares and nature's walk oh thank you Denise I knew it had nature in it somewhere gosh I love that stamp set you can see that my issue with birds still continues I must buy every bird stamp set in the catalogue I just can't help myself so old old version new version and we're going to make the new version today so I hope you enjoy this. It's going to be fun. And I put on my um, my <laughs> Facebook post last night that um, that you know. I, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I put on my ink pad, and everyone got really grumpy at me because my ink pad is so dirty. But you know what? This is a really um, dirty and messy technique so you've got to be prepared to get a little messy with this technique good morning Tony how are you hello from Florida um, so let's get playing now um, as you guys have come in please share uh, this live video tell your friends that I'm on live let them come and say hello and have a chat with us we're going to be making a card now together uh, and I have to move fairly swiftly because it's there's quite a few little elements to it. Make sure if you see something that you like, tap on the screen and give some hearts or some thumbs up or whatever you fancy. And um, let's have some fun together. So lots of comments, guys. Talk to me. I want to be able to talk back to you and answer any of your questions. So I'm going to flip you guys over. Hopefully I won't go upside down like I did before. And let's start stamping. Okay. Alrighty, so like I said, if you were here at the beginning of my um, video, you would have seen I am trialing a new microphone today. So 
if you cannot hear me properly or something weird is going on, please send, um, just tell me in the comments because I want you guys to be able to hear what I'm saying just as much as seeing what I'm saying. Um, okay, so let's have a little bow peep at these cards. So, rather than me waving about in the air with them. So we've got the old version and the new version. So the, the colours are a little bit different. The elements are fairly similar. And this is a really good idea to do um, with your cards too. If you are ever stuck for um, an idea of where to start with a card, why don't you get one of your older cards out and give it a bit of a refresh, give it a bit of a, a 2017 tilt to it and make something um, with a similar layout or a similar idea. So while I kept a lot of the elements of the older card, I changed some things up as well that just didn't um, fit with me and my current style. And I don't really know what my current style is. I suppose that the main thing would be that I quite like a lot of pinks um, and that kind of thing, but that hasn't changed. So. I don't know, maybe maybe we all progress a little bit with our styles. So I want to show you what I started with, with the glossy white paper. So it comes in A4, but I've cut it down to a more manageable size to work with. And I played a little bit with some different colours while I was having um, deciding which way to go last yesterday so here's one version that's with soft suede as the background color and chocolate chip as the kind of the highlight color then I flipped on over to the card that I decided to use which was soft suede and this was early espresso so this one you can actually see a few different variations. That's with Early Espresso and that's with the Chocolate Chip. So it does give, and I think I've even put a few swipes of Early Espresso. So it's actually fun just to play a little bit with the, the different colours that you have to see what you like. And then because we're in Australia, I thought what would be really fun would be to kind of have like an Australian stringy bark kind of gum tree colour. In it so that one there is with the soft suede but then I've got our two greys playing along as well the smoky slate and a little bit of the basic grey and I thought that was really really lovely I think you could do lots of very Australian beautiful gum tree themed cards with that and as you can see I've played with stamping on top of the glossy cardstock that's been coloured. So um, that one I believe was with the Memento ink and then that one was with the archival but my archival did need to be re-inked so it would be a little bit darker. They both, once they dry, they set beautifully on the glossy and you actually find that um, if, you, if you're a bit impatient like I am, the heat embossing, if you just pop a little bit of your heat gun over the top to dry it, which we'll have to do today because otherwise we'll, um, we won't be able to, you know, if we had all day we could sit around and chat while things dry, but we probably don't. So, and then we've got a little bit of, I, I went and did some embossing to see how that worked and that was a real treat actually. I really liked the, um, the heat embossing on the glossy white as well. The only thing is, and I'll probably touch on this again a little in a bit, you just have to make sure your heat gun's really beautifully heated before you start attacking your glossy white, otherwise it can, it can warp the paper a little bit. So that's some different colours. And I even did try blue. I thought I could make a C theme. It'll look so great. I may need to play a little bit longer with the different colours but um, I'm still not beaten. I think that could be an ocean as well. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try that again. So let's make a start. Um, you'll be surprised at how easy this is to do. So which one am I gonna go? I'm gonna go this way. So I've got the soft suede 
ink pad. You're going to open all the way up. I've got the glossy white cardstock. Oh, and I've cut, I've even did the measurements this week, so I wouldn't be, you know, making mistakes. So it's 10 centimeters across, and I've cut it. Actually, it says 4.8, but oh, yes, it was 14.8 centimeters. So, um, Sorry guys and girls that are um, in inches, I'm, I'm totally metric girl. So you just have to head along and check out some conversion sites because I'm just a metric girl here in Australia. So you know, open up your ink pad all the way and you'll see on the ink pad, you've got one side that it's, the top has kind of got like a short distance to the top and the bottom has got this well down here. You wanna make sure that you've got this at the top when you are swiping and it's really simple you are just going to start from the top and you're going to swipe down on your glossy and you're going to get your fingers dirty and I know there's probably a better way if I had adhered this to the um, grid paper underneath it's probably going to be a bit better now I'm going to turn on the side and I'm just going to and you know what, if, if there's something that you don't like, you can just, it's got a little, it's gonna be um, wet for a little bit. So you can just, even you can do the whole thing again, just for a little bit, it stays wet. So, what do we think? Okay, so that's the first, I actually don't mind that. It's, it's a pretty random kind of, a, <laughs> it's a random technique, which I like. What do you think, guys? Is that starting to look a bit like wood? Like a piece of cut wood, even? Um, I'm hoping that you guys are still writing comments. Okay. So, and then I've got the Early Espresso. Again, I've opened it all the way up. And I'm just going to turn it so it's tilting on an angle. And starting from the top. Very mushy. And sometimes I like to pivot it because that way it gives a, a different starting point. Check that out. That one was a little bit bold, Carolyn. Uh, I actually really like that. Okay. So that is a little bit stronger. You like it, Kayla? Oh, good. Good, good, good. That's a little bit bolder than the other one, but it will dry back a little bit. Oh, look at those little love hearts. You guys are so cute. All right, so I'm just going to um, give this a little bit of a run over with my heat gun. Looks like the bark of a gum tree. Good. I'm so glad that it's back too. So I'm just going to heat set this. So this would set beautifully on its own if I was patient and we all were around stamping at my house and we could have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee together. But we don't have that much time. So I'm just heat gunning it. Now I have got the old stamping up heat gun, which just has the one setting. But the new one has one setting for heat setting and one setting for um, glossy. So that's actually a really good idea and I, I need to invest in that because sometimes you just want um, just to quickly heat set something, especially with our black, oh, I still don't think that's quite right. Um, especially with our black inks, the archival ink, it's such a great ink color to, um, to watercolor with, but, you have to make sure that it's dry. So I'm just going to make sure this is dry before we move on. I did make another one in case I make a, make a whoopsie. Okay. I think it's happening. It was just that big lick of early espresso that stayed wet. Okay, now we're good. I am really glad too, Jenny, because there's so many fun techniques and this is just one of them, but 
it's gonna be fun okay so for the next part of my trick you know what I'm gonna pop that aside for a minute and we're gonna come back to that in a little bit I am going to stamp on our bird now so the stamp set that oh gosh you know what I'm, I realized that I have played with this stamp set I think on Facebook live before I'm not sure best birds I have got issues with bird stamp sets. I apologise if you are over bird stamp sets, but I just love them. You could use lots of other stamp sets with this as well. I was thinking that the dragonfly stamp set, which would be pretty fun um, with a wood background, but there's just lots of things that look great with wood. So, and of course the framelits, which is the birds and blooms thinglets, which got coordinate with this, um, with the stamp set. You know what, I am a sucker for stamp sets that coordinate really beautifully, like images that coordinate beautifully with our stamps. Well, did I say that right? Framelits? Yeah, framelits that coordinate with our stamps. I love that I don't have to cut them out all the time and they, they cut out things so beautifully, like in between this little birdie's legs. Hey, Michelle, how are you? So here I've got my old favourite shimmery white cardstock. You know, I love, love, love shimmery white cardstock. It is so good to colour with. And we've got um, two really lovely birds in this stamp set, but I thought this one was kind of the one I really wanted to colour with. So that's with the archival. I'm just going to give that a little heat set. Now, did you see how it started to curve a little bit then? If you just keep flipping the cardstock so it dries on both sides, you'll find that, um, that it doesn't warp so badly. Now, let's have a little think what I need. I need the soft suede. I'm just going to pop a little bit of colour on. I need the blushing bright, which I've already got some colour going there, and a little bit of Bermuda Bay. You didn't expect that, I bet. Oh, you've been watching my convention ads. Have you seen, have you haven't seen those before, Michelle? Oh, goodness, they were fun. They don't do that anymore. Stampin' Up! doesn't. Um, used to have a, a commercial competition. If you haven't seen my commercials, I think I've got them on my YouTube channel. But um, I, we used to have a, a commercial competition with Stampin' Up! conventions for demonstrators and I entered a couple which was lots of fun. But they don't do that anymore so I just have to speak to you guys live and that's pretty fun. I'm happy with that. So here with my aqua painter I'm just popping a wash of water over the top and I just find that it just helps a little bit with um, the colouring. It just makes it disperse just a little bit. Now I've got, I just looked at the screen and my bird was upside down and I panicked a little bit but I think that's because I just turned upside down. So now I'm just going to bring in a little bit of the soft suede. Do you guys want to get a little bit closer? Let me bring you in a little bit closer and I'll bring up my birdie so you can really see what I'm doing with the colouring. How's that? So I'm going to bring the soft suede all the way in. I'm just coming in nice and softly. So it's not too... You know, you can always add more colour, but it's impossible to take it off once it's there. And I usually have a little piece of paper towel close by. Then I just want a tiny little bit of blue on the wings. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit of Bermuda Bay, which is a colour that just looks really nice with the soft suede. And I'm also using Blushing Bride as my card base today, which is, you know, I super love all pinks. So there's a little bit of blue. Is that picking up? Can you guys see the blue? Okay, good. 
bit. Yeah, wetting the paper first, just a little wash certainly helps for me. Um, with the shimmery white paper, it doesn't have the capacity to hold the water the same as um, watercolour paper. So you just want to be careful that you don't over wet it. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is you can actually colour with your Wink of Stella in clear as well. It's just the same as using your aqua painter, but instead of dipping in with your aqua painter into your lid, you just dip in with your Wink of Stella. And then you can colour with the Wink of Stella in a colour. Isn't that cool? Did you know you could do that? It then brings out the beautiful um, shimmer, which is always impossible to pick up on live video. I wonder if you can pick up any of that shimmer. Um, I don't know, it might show up a little bit. You can colour with it and shimmer, and the, the shimmer's working at the same time, which is really lovely. And then just a little bit on his head. This is no natural bird. This is a complete Carolyn bird creation. So I apologise if I'm offending any bird lovers out there with my crazy, my crazy colouring. And just a little bit on his tail. How's that? And then once you've finished, um, once you've finished colouring with your Wink of Stella, just give it a little brush off the the blushing bride onto your um, paper towel. Gosh, my brain is not working this morning. And then you're ready to go. It's back to clear again, which is awesome. So that's our little birdie all done. I'm going to shut up my ink pads there move them out of the way to give a little bit of room because Bertha Big Shot has to come in. You know, it wouldn't be a stamping session without dear old Bertha making a showing. So let me get that. Oh, that's even closer. Alright, there's Bertha. So you know I name all my, um, my Big Shots. I've got two now, I've got Bertha and I've got Bert. And I was thinking the other day because I had a class and um, we had, we, as I said, we were using the Eastern Palace set. So we have a few different sorts of platforms. This, this is the platform that comes with the Big Shot when you purchase it. It has this kind of thick big platform like so and then it also comes with this thin die adapter that just sits on the top they used to be hinged on the um, on the side but like me they are now totally unhinged so um, that's how it comes but we also have other dies uh, other platforms that we pop in there um, oh I'm so cute Amanda hi Bertha um, so there is something called a precision platform, which I simply love, and it's fabulous for those dies that are super intricate. So I, you know, I always swapping them out. I'm putting on the um, the magnetic platform that we've got. I'm putting on the, the precision platform, and then I realise, hang on, I've got two big shots. I can have both of them out. So I feel very, very decadent. I feel like it's you know it's just totally changed my life that I now have two. Big shots sitting out I don't hide one away like I used to and um, you know, just bring it out for classes I actually put both um, have both out and so I could have one set up for the thinlets and one set up for with my um, precision plate so anyways back to the thing at hand so I've just popped a little bit of washi tape I know you can use magnetic um, platform for that but I, I do love my washi tape solution so we're going to roll that through. I love the way it totally cuts that out so beautifully. I've just got to, just between his legs it seems to get caught. So there we go. So look at that. How gorgeous is he or she? 
Then we're going to quickly, while we've got Bertha out, she's having her cameo spot for the day, so we better make her feel useful. We're going to also cut out another piece with, um, with an early espresso while we're here. And I will show you why. Where's that? Do, do, I need a little bit of Bertha music. I should get some Bertha music going. Okay. All right, Bertha, that was it. Now, give the limelight back to me. She's such a star. Hold that one. Okay. So I'm just going to pop that bit out because that always sticks. Okay. So we've got our little Tweety here. And I am just going to prep her. I've got a little, I've changed it to her now. I'm obviously losing the plot, but okay. So I'm just, I just wanted the little bird to sit up a tiny bit more on my card. So I've got, oh gosh, I've lost my scissors. Honestly, Carolyn. We are, I do have other scissors. When you're attached to the microphone, it's very hard to move away from the desk. These are things I'm learning. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of dimensionals there and pop them off. And then I'm going to pop these two together. Now, why are you doing this, Carolyn? Well, um, it's just because I wanted the little bird to sit up on the page, on the card, and I like that it has that shadow behind it, which gives just a little bit of a, a depth to it. You'll see that when we finish the card. Now, a little bit of Tombow, you have to be super careful with your Tombow because even though it's my favourite, it does it does ooze if you put too much on. So I'm just popping a little bit on his tooty toes because I want the toes to look like they're sitting on the branch once we do that. So I, I want the back to be have a bit of dimension on, but I want the feet to be nice and flat together. Okay, so Birdie is done. So we're just going to pop him to one side and bring back our glossy white cardstock, which is now beautifully, totally dry. Now, I like to keep my embossing buddies. I've got two because I thought I lost one once. I bought another one. But they don't actually wear out. I think the first one I've had since I started stamping, which was like eight years ago. So um, once you've got one, you actually don't need to. But I have them, keep them in this little bowl close to, in a drawer close to my desk because... That way, if I have things right at hand and ready, I know I'm going to use them. If I stuff things away in plastic containers and be right away from me, I just don't use them because I am a lazy stamper. So, Tweety wants to hop into the act. Now, I'm just going to bring in the card so I remember where I put things. So I have... So I make sure, yeah. So I have popped embossing buddy all over <clears throat> that glossy white cardstock that I've used um, with the ink pads. I'm going to bring in some copper embossing powder, and I'm going to bring in the branch. So we've got the Versamark, which we need to have our embossing powder stick. And then we need to bring in some branches to this tree. That's one. And out of sight, out of mind. Exactly. I'm totally that way. And even if it's, I have to stand up and walk over, um, you know, just like a few feet, I'll go oh, use something else instead. So lazy. But... It's, it's amazing how when you set out your craft area with just a little bit of thought of how you're going to use things, it just works a lot better. 
So last one. I'm going to pop that down there for something for the bird to sit on. Okay. And now I've got a little bit of paper. We get out. Now everyone stores their embossing powders in different ways. I used to store all of my embossing powders um, in little containers. And I still do that with my clear embossing powder and my white embossing powder, which I just use all the time. Those are my probably my go-to embossing powder colours. But I found that they just take up so much room if I store every colour in those little containers with the spoons inside that, again, I have to, can't store them right next to my desk. My desk isn't set up that way. So I've gone back to leaving the colours that I don't use as often in the little pots and just using a piece of paper to funnel them back in. I've got the name on the bottom and I store them upside down so I can see the colour and I can see the name. And another little thing that's just made my life a little bit easier. So now I need to heat emboss those leaves. I'm just going to turn on my heat embossing for a little bit longer just to really heat that up a little bit. Just have a little sip of coffee. And I've got that nice and warm now. Okay, so heat embossing is fun. So let's come in close and see. Oh, good morning, Jeanette. How are you, sweet? Nice to see you on. All right, let's see how this heat embossing works. It's pretty quick when you heat it up properly. Beautiful. Can you guys see that happening? I hope so. It's a little bit tricky with Facebook Live. Okay. Check that out. Copper embossing powder. Oh wow! Look how it's just okay. It's my card, and I know I should stop gushing about my own card, but oh my goodness, I love that. All right, let's do a little bit more embossing while we're at it. I've got here a piece of Blushing Bride cardstock. It is 10.5 centimeters across. We're gonna. Um, it's 29.8 centimetres long, which is the full length of an A4 piece of cardstock. And I'm going to score it at 14.8 centimetres, which I've gone ahead and already done. So I'm just going to take that out just a little bit. Now I've got the score line in there and you might not be able to see that very well. So I'll just pop it in a little bit more. And I've got this stamp set also from the Best Birds stamp set. If you have not got Best Birds, you need to get Best Birds. Order that now. Head to my blog, carolinbenny.com, and order that now. Okay. Embossing Buddy. Embossing Buddy is our buddy. I'm going to just stamp actually the edge here. And then I'm going to stamp it again. Now this is in Versamark. So Versamark, of course, is, is like a sticky, clear watermark. You can't actually see it a whole heap. But it's awesome. It's awesome to... I actually stamp with it too sometimes in some techniques. But it's actually pretty awesome for heat embossing. It is super magical, isn't it? Um, one of the, we had some girls here for class on Tuesday and, you know, it never fails just to wow everybody. Even people that have done it a hundred times before, heat embossing is so much fun. So, so just, that's that stamp. 
Now I'm going to feed it back into the funnel and pop the lid on. Always put the lid on before you turn on the heat gun. That's a tip. That's a top tip right there. Okay, and now we're going to get the heat gun back in. It is a heat gun kind of day, isn't it? Let's see if that shows up anymore. So basically, it will just not look... Some people aren't sure when the powder is turned. It will just go from dull to lovely and shiny. And if it's not shiny yet, it's not heat set. that might be all of our heat gunning so if that really annoyed you that's it now I'm, I'm, I'm done sorry about that noise so got my bone folder out my trusty bone folder an essential card marking tool put that on top of your wish list if you are just new to card making bone folder so I've just heat set one side of this blushing bride card base and now I'm going to pop on this glossy white cardstock card front that's been, oh, it's upside down, Miss Jane. Like so. Now we're going to need, I like a little bit of dimension. So, you know, go crazy with these dimensionals. That's what they're there for. So I think this is kind of, because it's just, it's got a little bit of heat. Um, it's just been a little affected by the heat, probably because I was rushing a little bit. I'm going to go nutso with these. And pop them everywhere. The only problem with popping them everywhere is then you need to take off. Hey, Carolyn, how are you? There can never be enough Carolyns on a Carolyn Facebook page, in my opinion. So bring it on, Carolyn. Um, now I'm just taking off the backs of these, these little dimensionals. I've gone crazy. Stocks and dimensionals have just gone up because I have got a bit crazy with those. Oh, I'm not going to pop that down yet, though. That was, that was wise of me to wait. So I've got my little bird. I've got that. I've got that. But I just need the sentiment sorted. So I've got a piece here of um, Blushing Bride. It is... Can you tell me a little ruler? It's about oh, just over 12 millimetres wide. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment in Memento. I know that I can stamp it in archival, but there is something about Memento black ink and sentiments that just makes me happy. So I hope that you can see me stamping and I'm not stamping off of camera. Let's see if I can get this straight without looking over the top of it. Okay. Oh, look at that. Check it out. It is straight and it is lovely and crisp and black and okay super happy with that now let's see if I've completely no I haven't I was worried then that I had put this in the wrong spot all my dimensionals oh that one stuck them down so we want the sentiment to come across the page I'm just going to trim it a little because I've got a bit too much there Carolyn's do rock in the crafting world. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That, um, you know, when I grew up, I thought Carolyn was a really unusual name. And here we go. I've, I've met so many Carolyns lately. It's, um, it is truly... We're bringing Carolyn, the name Carolyn back, Carolyn. Okay, so that is the sentiment. Little birdie's going to sit 
there on the branch. I just need to make sure everything's happening in the right place. Sorry guys, this is the boring bit where I have to just fiddle for a minute. There we go. I knew that that would be when I planned this out last night. I apologize for that. So, gosh, okay. Could have done that better. Okay, I can put this down now on this page. Thank goodness. Hey, Wendy, how are you? Don't you love that glossy white cardstock is back? We like it. Now this is my old stash. So I don't know if it's going to be exactly the same, but I'm hopeful because this is awesome. And you know what? I often, like I, I try and not keep everything. And so I, I do a lot of, um, give, give a lot of my retired stock to my customers as gifts and, you know, all sorts of things. Um, but I hung on to this glossy white. And I think maybe I had a little premonition that it was coming back. Sometimes good things just can't stay away, can they? So there we go. Now, I did you see how I did that? Because I wanted it to go right to the bottom, I put it up on the end to make sure that that was nice and straight. And that gave me a really good way of, of popping that down and keeping it nice and straight. So where are we up to, people? We just need a little bit of doiling and I think I've left enough of that so with our white tea lace doilies they are so crazy sweet and I just want to I just need a, just a little bit more of a difference in color between the background and our birdie. So I'm just going to position that like so. Some of this is a little bit of a, you know, you just have to play around a little bit. Okay. How cute, right? Do you like this card, guys? There we go. This one's a little bit different. I think I had the bird up a little bit higher on my last card. Or the, but you know, every card's a little bit different. So, well, at least in, in Carol and World it is. Okay, there we go. That is finished. So I will, that's the one I made before. A few differences. This was a little bit wider. Bird was a little bit higher. But still not too dissimilar. This was the original card. That was the original. That was my 2014 card. Using, what was that stamp set called again? Oh my goodness, I've forgotten again. Holy smokes. Anyways, so it is using this fabulous glossy white cardstock that's going to be available from me, carolynbetty.com. Um, on my blog, you can head there with my online shop and purchase this glossy white cardstock that you can do all of these fun techniques with as of next month. So let me just flip you guys over. Hang on. I'm flipping. I'm flipping. There we are. Here I am. I'm back. So you can um, purchase these, uh, these glossy white cardstock as of next month. So if you, if I'm your demonstrator of choice here in Australia and um, you need to get your hands on the new catalogue, please let me know. If you are already one of my beautiful customers and you've purchased from me in the last 12 months, your catalogue is already winging its way to you. I've ordered those already. So you will be getting them super duper soon. And also keep your eye out in the post because I'll be sending um, your a card and a little stash of goodies to you separately. So, but if you don't have a demonstrator um, and you'd like to pick me as your demonstrator, pick me, pick me. Um, please do send me a message and I will make sure that you get one of the new catalogs so I hope you enjoyed 
this Facebook Live today thinking about what was old and bringing it fresh into current styles and I know you're going to love the glossy cardstock best birds is still available um, and it's going through next year as well it is such a fabulous stamp set but I know you're going to come up with lots and lots of different ideas on how to use this um, wood back ground technique on your glossy white cardstock so I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend and um, enjoy your stamping all weekend and I will see you again next Friday here at Carolyn's Stamping Room. Okay, see you later guys. Bye.